Well, I don't know what it's been like all across the country, but for us here in the Midwest this year, and also especially north of me, it's been a very cold spring and a lot of snow up north that was still holding on for a long time. And although there wasn't as much snow down here, it's definitely been much colder this spring, not a whole lot of moisture here, and we've had a lot of lows down in the 30s, some even in the 20s in the last week or so. And that has caused the grass to be a little confused as to what's going on, and not quite like a normal spring. So let's talk about spring fertilizer in a weird year. What what should you be looking at and thinking about right now since things aren't going maybe as they normally would. Now, this is actually about the second year in a row that this has happened here where it's been pretty cold all the way until that May timeframe. So what does a typical spring look like for cool season lawns? Usually you're gonna come out of that winter time, the grass wants to grow like crazy and it's a great time for cool season lawns after that cold winter. So usually you'll have a flush of growth is what we call it, where you're mowing and you think next day, look out there at the yard, man, it looks like it grew a ton overnight. This is just the cycle of cool season lawns and that's what's supposed to happen happen in that spring time frame. Well, this year has been lagging along. We've only had a few days here and there that have been pretty warm. And then, like I said, at night, it's been pretty cold most of the time. So the grass is still lagging along. It's not really getting into that real flush of growth like it would. So what do you do about your fertilizer? Usually for me, I will not do any fertilizer before that spring flush happens. And if I do, it'd be a very small amount. But the reason for that is because you're already going to get so much top growth out of that. The more fertilizer that you add before that flush of growth happens, Happens, the more that you're gonna have to try to keep up with mowing the more that it just sends tons of top growth out but we're not really focused on top growth right now we'd love to make sure that the root system of the grass is as healthy and strong going into the most stressful time which is the summer but that flush really hasn't happened here and so now I'm sitting in a limbo of I can look out here and see that the grass is not really growing all that much there's a few patches here and there that are growing it looks like it needs fertilizer so what are the options if you're like most homeowners, you're probably gonna be grabbing a granular fertilizer. But like I just said, we don't wanna be putting down heavy doses yet because it is going to warm up yet and you're still going to see some sort of flush of growth before we get to that summer point. So putting down a whole bunch of fertilizer right now isn't really the option that I would like to go with, but the problem with granular fertilizers in a lot of cases is that it's difficult to do a low application of that, especially if you have anything with a bigger prill size for fertilizer. And that's just the size of that granular itself that's gonna be difficult to do on a low setting. It just doesn't wanna spread out very well. So you can look at some other options right here. One of my favorite fertilizers that we've done with Lawn Supply Company it has a very small prill size. It actually looks almost like salt and pepper. So this you can do on lower rates. It's really made for that. You can see on the bag here, we can do a lower rate. We can go all the way up to about a half a pound, but you can do those lower rates with the fertilizers like that. If you wanted to grab another example from a store, actually the Scott stuff usually has a very small prill size to it too. That's one one of the advantages because you can do lower rates with those. Or the other option, which I like the most, is to do a soluble or liquid fertilizer application. The benefit to this option is you can control the rate, you can take it down at really as low as you want to, and you're going to get a faster response out of it because you're feeding directly to the leaf of the plant. It's pretty much instantaneous. You let it sit on there for a few hours, water all that stuff in to wash it down into the root system, whatever might be left on the leaf, and you get a much more instant response from it while being able to control that growth and making sure that not too much top growth is happening. So I mentioned Lawn Supply Company. For those that don't know, that is a brand that I started a couple seasons ago. And really what that was for was to bring unique and high-end products directly to homeowners for their lawns, stuff that you're not gonna be able to go find in the stores, and there are much more specialty items. My favorite product that we've come out with is the Equalizer product. This is a soluble fertilizer. So that simply means that we're gonna put it in a small granular form. You're going to mix that into water and then put it in your backpack sprayer and spray it. It's a cheaper option than shipping liquids and it's a very affordable option for multiple applications on your lawn. Today I'm going to show you how I'm going to use that on my plots, mix everything up, and do a spray application. So this is four to eight ounces of this product. Just depends on what rate you want to go with. But usually, if I'm looking for a pretty decent boost, I'll go with the higher rate of eight ounces per 1,000 square feet. That's still not gonna cause any sort of major growth or anything like that, but you will get a good response out of it. The thing that I love the most about this product is that you get such a great response with these low rates. So this bag goes a long way in terms of being able to really get the most bang for your buck out of this thing. So there's some technology in here that we were able to do that allows for those lower rates so that you can get a better response out of the plant. This is stuff that's usually been done in agriculture Culture, but really found a way to do some cool things in this project for lower rates and finding a better response out of those lower rates. So we'll put this on here and then I'm gonna tear that so that we get back to zero. 
Now I'm just going to measure this out as if I was doing a thousand square feet just to make it easy for you. So we're just going to need eight ounces of product. And I've said this before, but it looks a lot like pixie sticks. But you probably don't want to give it a taste, unfortunately. It's got 8.2 there, just a slightly over, no big deal. But if you were just doing a thousand square feet, you'd measure that out like that. You'd mix that into one gallon of water at least in your sprayer. I usually spray at one gallon of water per 1,000 square feet as the minimum. You can do more than that if you'd like, but one gallon is usually pretty standard. So let's get the sprayer out. As I said, that was just for 1,000 square feet, but I'm going to be spraying all these plots today and then doing probably the low cut plot. So I will be filling this up and going with four gallons of water in here and measuring all the product out accordingly. But if you were just spraying 1,000 square feet, You'd put a gallon of water in here. I like to mix outside of my sprayer just to make sure everything is mixed up well before I pour it in. Then you'd spray that gallon of water in here over a thousand square feet. So I'm gonna add this here. And it really should dissolve very easily. If you use warm water, it would be even easier. But if you happen to have any sort of issues or you have really hard water or something, which I'm actually using water from the well right now, which should be pretty hard, but uh, if you have any issues with it dissolving, then you can add a little bit of fixer. That's another product that we have, just in case you have issues. But at my old property, I had really hard water there too, and I never had any issues with this going into solution. So it should be totally fine. The other option you can do, some people like these, is you can get this all stirred up if you'd like to, or if you have a strainer in your backpack sprayer, you can put the material on there, spray over that, and let it dissolve as it goes. Everything in here, though, looks like it mixed in there perfectly fine. Now, if you'd like to go the extra mile, I like to add this in, too. This is greener. So this is an iron product with a couple other micros in here. You got manganese and magnesium as well. I like to add this in with my application just for that extra boost of green. You don't have to do this every time or anything, but uh, this has been a product that I usually add to my equalizer apps. This is two to three ounces per 1,000 square feet. All right, so now we'll carefully pour this in here. Looks like I may have accidentally left this in the cold one day and cracked this somewhere because it's definitely leaking a little bit out of this bottom part, so. I think I have a manual backpack, like a pump backpack. I need to go look and see. That's my fourth season with that backpack sprayer. I've never had any issues with it whatsoever, but I wouldn't be surprised if I had some liquid in it at some point and got frozen in all of our move and all that stuff. Not sure. Well, I guess that's why you have a backup. Never used this before, so I don't even know what's gonna happen here with this. Well, this thing's definitely not very comfortable compared to my other sprayer, I'll tell you that. I got this harness all messed up, but it's like it might rain here, so I gotta get in. One thing you need to remember with these fertilizers is these are lower doses more frequently. So every two to three weeks is my program with equalizer on my low cut turf back at my other property. That was what I pretty much used the last couple seasons was equalizer every two, three weeks or so, throw in the greener in there, or that was pretty much what my program was. And a couple other things I would do, prevention of fungus wise and all that, which I can get into with my new front yard here this season, but that was the main fertilizer program that I was using. So if you have the time to do it every couple weeks or so to get out there and get into the yard and do it in spoon feeding like this, 
this, it will give you absolutely amazing results. Just takes more time and more energy to do it. But if you have the time and energy, I would definitely want to go this route if I could. But that is the basis of what I'm doing in this weird spring. And even if it wasn't a weird spring, this process works for really any time of the year. If you want some low doses of fertilizer more often, it's going to give you nice, even results. Hope you enjoyed that video today. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.